All right, here we're gonna start with a step-by-step -step method for related rates. And I'm not even gonna read the problem before introducing that first step, because the first step is so important. If you don't make a picture, reading through the problem is almost not even, not even that useful, okay? So let's just kind of look at this together. We'll make a picture first and then we'll identify some variables. So we got a plane flying overhead at a constant elevation of 4,000 feet. So let's, let's draw our little airplane. Um, uh, I'm very good at drawing. Let's say it looks something like that. Beautiful airplane. And it is 4,000 feet above the ground. And there's a man that's viewing the plane from a position 3,000 feet from the base of a radio tower. That's hard to draw on the picture, because we don't know where the radio tower is. There's a radio tower somewhere, and there's a man that's 3,000 feet away from it. Let's keep reading. The airplane is flying away from the man horizontally, okay. If the plane is flying at a rate of 600 feet per second, well, we can, we can include that. We can get that in the picture. 600 feet per second. Um, at what rate is the distance between the man and the plane increasing when the plane passes over the radio tower? Okay, so who knows where the radio tower is? But this question is asking us about the specific moment that the plane is above the radio tower. Okay? Uh, <laughs> that's not a, I don't know how to draw a radio tower. Uh, they don't look like that though. <laughs> so that's how, that's what tells us where the radio tower is. Okay. Whenever we're doing these problems, we're only looking at a specific moment in time. And so you got to read the problem to figure out what moment in time we're talking about. In the last one with the balloon, it was when the radius was three centimeters. In this one, it's when the plane is over the radio tower. So now we can go back and incorporate that earlier information into our picture. A man is viewing the plane from a position 3,000 feet from the base, and the airplane's flying away. That tells us that the man has to be over here. All right, so this is going to be 3,000 feet right here. And we're curious about the distance between them. How is the distance between them changing? All right, hold on. We got to write that 4,000 feet somewhere else. We're curious about how is the distance between them changing? How is that distance changing? So let's, let's come up with some variables. Oh, 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 no, Jason, bad Jason. We're curious about the distance between them. We need to identify some variables. You can call it X. You can call it Y. You can call it D. D is actually maybe not a good choice. <laughs> Uh, if we call it D, then we're going to take the derivative with respect to time of D. Uh, there's just going to be too many Ds running around. Uh, it would be like the derivative with respect to D. Let's not do D. <laughs> there's enough Ds. All right, we can use X. It doesn't matter what we use. Um, actually, X is probably a bad choice for some other reasons that will become apparent later. But you really can call it... Let's call it Z. If you call it the wrong thing, don't worry too much about calling it the wrong thing. If you call it the wrong thing, you can rename it later. Okay, so why do I call it Z? It's because we're also curious about X's and Y's. All right, we have horizontal distance here. We have vertical distance here. We're just trying to name everything. Okay. And we really want things in terms of variables. I'll talk more about that later. So we want to name everything that's going on in our picture. So in the last one, what we would do is name the radius R and the volume V. And notice that even though we knew that R was three, we still had R labeled in the picture. That is important because you can't take the derivative if you've already plugged things in. But we'll worry about that more later. So we have I think all of our variables, and if not, we can add some later. We have a picture showing what's going on, and we've named everything. This diagonal distance is Z, the vertical distance is Y, and the horizontal distance is X. Next step, step number two. 
Uh, what do we know? And what do we want? Write that down. WTF, maybe, for what to find, want to find. Um, what do we know? Well, we know at this specific moment, at, whoa, that's the wrong button. At this specific moment, the X coordinate is 3,000 feet. The Y coordinate at this specific moment is 4,000 feet. The Z coordinate at this specific moment, we know that too. You can use Pythagorean's theorem. Or, if you remember special triangles, you should get that it is 5,000 feet. This is a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Pythagorean theorem would also get you there. Uh, we also know other things. We know, uh, we know how fast the plane is moving. What is this in the context of our variables? Also, this man is like 800 feet tall if this figure is drawn to scale. <laughs> what is this 600 feet? It's a rate. It's a velocity. So it has to be a rate. It has to be the derivative of something. What's changing as this plane is flying? Well, the pl plane is flying horizontally. So the only thing that's changing here is horizontal distance. The change in x over time is 600 feet per second. Right? When the plane's flying, it's not changing y. It is affecting z, but the z is changing a little differently. So I think that's all the information that, that we know. And if you didn't include the z here, if you didn't include the z equals 5,000, that would be okay. We could get that later. All right, and uh, finally, what do we want? Well, what is the question asking us? Look at that last sentence. At what rate is the distance between the man and the plane increasing at this time? At what rate is this distance changing? We're looking for, we want, the rate of change of that distance between them, not the horizontal distance, not the vertical distance, the total distance, at what rate that is changing over time. So these four things on the top are what we know, and this is what we want, and that is step two in our process of solving a related rates problem. Step three is to find an equation relating everything. This one usually takes the most creativity. Um, find an equation relating these quantities. And a lot of times your picture is going to give it to you. What do we have a picture of? We have a picture of a right triangle. Well, do we know some relationship between the x coordinate of a right triangle, the y, sorry, the horizontal length? of a right triangle, the vertical length of a right triangle, and its hypotenuse? You bet we do. Pythagorean theorem. That's exactly what we want. That's an that is an equation that relates these quantities. In the last example, the equation that related the quantities was our volume equation. All right? Well, here, what, you know, what relates all these? Pythagorean theorem. So x squared plus y squared equals z squared. Or you could write it as x, which is a function of t, x is changing over time, squared plus y. y is actually not a function of t. y is actually just a constant here. But it can be a constant function. Let's not worry about it equals the distance, which is also changing over time. These are all functions of t. These are all quantities, x, y, and z. These are quantities that are changing as time elapses. So both of these formulations are fine. The second one is a little easier to see that we do need to use the chain rule. So the first one, you might have to be a little careful to remember to use the chain rule, but both are okay. Either one of these is what we can use. 
4, which is going to be written in red, just like the other numbers, not blue, is going to be to use implicit differentiation. Implicit differentiation. Right? If we want dx d, sorry, if we want dz dt over there, if we want dz dt, how do we get it? We're going to have to take the derivative. Specifically, and this is going to be very common, we're going to have to take the derivative with respect to t. So we d dt both sides. I'm going to write it in this notation because this is very common. But the other notation, this one over here, really is very, very good. So we're taking the derivative of both sides with respect to t. This is where implicit differentiation really becomes important. All of these are changing with respect to t. And again, technically y is constant here, but we're, we don't have to worry about that. That'll, we'll take care of that later automatically. We'll just, you can just assume that all of these variables are changing over time. All of these variables relate to time. So implicit differentiation says that we have to use the chain rule here. The derivative of x squared is 2x. If we were taking the derivative with respect to x, then we'd be done. We're taking the derivative with respect to t, so we have to multiply by dx dt. And same with y, 2y times dy dt. And same with z, 2z dz dt, implicit differentiation, 3.8. And now we just plug in everything and solve. And that's step five, our final step. Plug in and solve. Plug in everything that we know from up here. All of these things we're now plugging in down here to try to solve this for what we want. We're trying to solve for dz dt. So we know the x quantity at this time the x quantity is 3,000 feet. We know how x is changing over time. We said it's growing by 600 feet every second. That's dx dt. Plus, the vertical distance is y. We said y is 4,000 right now, times dy dt. What did we find as our dy dt? We didn't. Remember when I said it's fine if you didn't catch that z? We'd get it later. Well, we didn't catch the y either. We did not write down dy dt. But we can. This man is not moving. This plane is only moving horizontally. And let's approximate the earth with a, let's say the earth is flat for a moment. <laughs> and yes, you were told by your math professor today to assume the earth is flat. Um, we're, at this specific in time, if you're only 3,000 feet, the curvature of the Earth is, is, uh, is minimal. So we're going to say that if it's only flying horizontally, then there is no change in that y-coordinate. Um, spherical geometry gets much, much more painful, but we're not going to worry about that here. So y is not changing at all over time. The height of the airplane is not changing. So dy dt... Oh, that's really nice because that turns everything here into a big zero. And that equals 2 times z. We said z was 5,000 times dz dt, which we did not know. We do not know dz dt. That's the point. That's what we're trying to find. Now we can just simplify and solve. There's a lot of zeros here. Um, I think we're going to get... Uh, no, 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 no. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mess this up. 2 times 3,000 times 600. 2 times 3,000 times 600 is 3.6 million. Oops. So 3.6 million is that first one plus 0 equals 10,000 times dz dt. Divide both sides by 10,000 and we'll be done dz dt equals, we can cancel uh, four zeros. And uh, we're just left with 360, I believe. 
So even though the plane is traveling at 300 feet per second, the distance between them is increasing by 360 feet per second. And again, the units are just, what are the units of Z? Z is our distance in feet, divided by our units of T, seconds, feet per seconds. That's how we find units of any derivative. So the distance between these two is growing at a rate of 360 feet per second. And that's our final answer. That is our step-by-step -step -step process. That's how we can solve any related rates problem, even though they're all going to be different. All right. Now you should be equipped to do some more problems. Try a few. And we're going to do some more examples in the next two videos as well. All right. So uh, good luck. I uh, hope you enjoy these as much as I do. And I hope your pictures are as good as mine are. Bye-bye. <laughs>